A few months ago, I did a video discussing the tools that I've been using all of the time. I thought this would be a fun little video just showing some stuff that I use every day. I did not expect it to quickly become one of the biggest videos on my channel and to show so many people so much cool stuff. I have a whole video coming soon where I show even more tools that I've been using every day, but there's one in particular that doesn't fit in a video like that. It's a tool that deserves its own dedicated, focused discussion because honestly, I wasn't using it right if really at all before. That tool is Raycast, and it seems really simple, but once you learn the power of what it can do, it's actually groundbreaking for us Mac developers. Even if you're not on a Mac, I do recommend watching this because there's a lot of ideas in here that are cool for people both in and outside of the Apple ecosystem. And honestly, a lot of the ideas and things I set up here are things that I wanted after using that Linux machine for a few days and desperately, dearly missing the window management tools that came from there. Thalii. These guys are great. If you want to add generative media to your apps, they're almost certainly the right way to do it. I'm not just saying that because they pay me. I'm saying that because I've been using them for all my stuff for a while and I invested because I like them that much. They have the highest quality diffusion models and they run them serverlessly. So you can just hit them as an API. The coolest part though, is that you can play around in them. So you can just click a model that you think is interesting. Like I'll play with this Flux Pro. You can see how much it costs per image gen, how much you can use it per dollar super fancy, super nice. So you never worry about destroying yourself with costs. Generated a very nice looking high res image, but that's just web prompting. Where does the fun happen? Well, we see here, we have additional settings. Some of these are only available under API. How do we do that? Well, if we click the API tab, you get everything that is available there in their SDK right here. You can install their NPM package and have a fully type safe client. Or if you want, you can just hit it with curl like you can with anything else. Pretty cool that you can go straight from prompting in the playground to throwing the API into your application. I've never seen anything quite like this and it's been genuinely really fun to add AI stuff to my apps. Thank you, Fal, for sponsoring. Check them out today at soydev.link slash Fal. Enough yapping, let's check it out. Raycast is a replacement for Spotlight. You know, the thing you get when you press command space on a Mac. If you're on Windows, there is some equivalent now, but it's kind of like when you press the start menu and start typing for a thing. Usually what this is used for is to open an app quickly. So if I wanted to open Affinity Photo, which is the thing I use for editing my photos, I do that and it opens. Cool. Great. Wonderful. But why do I care so much? Isn't that basically just what I got before? There are reasons. Things that I slowly introduced more and more of over time. There have been other alternatives to Spotlight before. There was a whole era of combining Alfred and Bartender to make these really fancy Mac setups. And I hated all of it and gave it up. Raycast, I caved for because some of the extensions were really cool. The main thing I caved for is when I saw the calculator, I realized I needed it. The calculator is my favorite way to do math by a lot. In here, I can just type things like 1821 plus three or four, I missed the key. I can press enter, now it's on my clipboard. I can press this again and I'm back where I was. It's saved in the history, so I can go up and down to get to historical values. It'll even so or search when I start typing and only show ones that match the values I'm typing. It's so good. It's such a weirdly convenient way to do math quick and keep track of values, put them in your clipboard, have them in your history and do things. I haven't opened a calculator app on a Mac since installing Raycast. It's so good. It's so annoying how good it is. I could make the argument moving to Raycast is worth it just for the calculator, like legitimately. And if that's all there was there, it's worth it. There's a lot more though. They have window layouts. I'm not using those yet because I'm still a, a rectangle guy. I'm sure I have it open somewhere here. Yeah, rectangle. Rectangle's a modern spectacle. What it's for is doing this quick. If I wanna take these two things I have open, like my Notion and my browser, I have hotkeys to just do splits, make them wider, smaller, whatnot. Convenient, but that's a separate app. Theoretically, I could do that in Raycast as well. I don't, but I could. There's a future where I finally bother to set it up. I just haven't yet. Most people I know using Raycast are using that. But again, you can use what you want and not what you don't want. And I've been amazed at how many of these things there are and also how many of them I haven't done. I mean, I've only won 45% through the tutorial. This is a small one, but I love it. I can move it. It shows you the grid lines for where you probably want to have it. But if I want to move this out of the way because I'm doing some math or something, oh, it's so convenient to be able to just quickly move this window. I am surprised how often I do that. I usually keep it like here, but I move it all the time. It's really convenient. We haven't even gotten to the fun things yet. The thing that has recently changed my life to the point where I was inspired enough to make a video is in the settings. If you go to extensions, 
These are things that they come with, but also things you can install. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. There's even an extension for upload thing that I'll be sure to demo momentarily. But what I now can no longer live without and would need other software to do it is the shortcuts, specifically hotkeys in applications. I set up hotkeys for all of my most used apps. So Arc, my browser, is Control-1. Arm cord, which is my Discord fork, is Control-5. Cursor is Control-3. My terminal, Ghosty's in here, it's Control-2. And now I already have Caps Lock rebound to Control. So now I hold down Caps Lock, I press 1, and my browser. I press 3, and I'm in my editor. I press 5, and I'm in Discord. It's one click now. No more command tab and hoping I get to the right app in the right amount of time. No more context shifting and all those. I just press Control and hit the number for the app that I want. This is a thing that I used to do when I was a big Linux guy. And when I moved to Mac, I convinced myself that command tab is good enough. And honestly, it mostly is, but it's not perfect. Now it is. Now I know with one click how to go to my editor, how to go to my Discord, how to go to my browser with just one press. But we haven't even gotten into the extensions, which are one of the most fun parts. I'll show a personal favorite first, SVGL. I need to open up Affinity again first though. Affinity is my graphics editor of choice. There's plenty of other options out there. It's what I like though. I have an Affinity project. Let's say I'm making a thumbnail for this video. Command space, SVG, enter. Now I can look up SVGs for all sorts of common things. Let's say I want one. Do they have one for Raycast? They do. I press enter. Now it's on my clipboard. Now I paste. Now I have their SVG. Look at that. Do you know how convenient that is? So command space, SVG, enter, TypeScripts, enter, on my clipboard, back to work. Life-changing. The amount that this prevents me from having to shift context, go look at in my file directories to see if I already have the thing, go to the browser to find the logo, find it on the website, save it, throw it in here. It's like five to 20 steps are now down to two. It's so good. And even if you don't use Raycast, SVGL is an awesome open source source of all the different SVGs you might need for tech-adjacent logos. It's made my life significantly better. And it might do the same for you too. I've been very, very happy with SVGL. But what if you don't want to type an SVG? What if you want to type, I don't know, an emoji? This is one of the things that I used to think macOS did better than others that I would argue it now does worse than others. If I want to type an emoji on macOS, I press the globe key, wait for it to slowly come up in hopes that it does, and then press the button wait way longer for it to go away and paste in the value. With Raycast, you open it, you start typing emoji, enter, and you pick the emoji you want. You can obviously search, so pray, enter, and it gets in immediately. But you might have noticed, this is one of my favorite subtle things with Raycast. When you bind a hotkey, it shows you it here in the name of the thing. So I'm typing search emoji, but you might have noticed I bound a hotkey for it already. So all I have to do from here, command period, enter, and it's in. How did they make an emoji picker that is faster than the one in Mac? It's insane. It's so much better. <laughs> I, I cannot believe that this, like the, the globe slash function key went from fine to I don't press that button on my keyboard anymore. It's so good. It's so good. I am so happy that this is that easy to do. You can also bind custom names for things too when you search them here. So I have a calendar that I use called Notion Calendar. The issue is that Notion Calendar used to be named Cron. And if I type in Notion Calendar, or I just type in Notion, normal Notion comes up first. So I had to type too much because if also I type in Calendar, the normal Calendar app comes up. So I bound a alias to Notion Calendar, Cron, so I can still call it Cron and open up my calendar. It's so convenient. And I'm just scratching the surface. If I take this picture, let's say I have this on my clipboard. I say Command C, it's on my clipboard. I want to send it to somebody. Space, upload from clipboard, enter. I need to put a token in because I haven't set up the upload thing extension. So if I go to uploadthing.com, which is, by the way, best way to do file uploads as a developer, you didn't already know, we put a lot of work into building upload thing. I can grab an app I already have or make a new one. Raycast dump. Oh, looks like I already have one. Cool. API keys, copy. It has now been configured. I just pasted, hit enter, and now I can upload from clipboard. I don't have a file, so I'll go add one. What's this tab? Back here, grab a thumbnail from my most recent video, upload from clipboard, command, enter. Now I have it here. I can press enter open in browser, command enter to put it on my clipboard. And now I have a URL to a file 
that I had on my clipboard. It is nuts. It's actually nuts how fast I can go from a file that I just command seed on my clipboard, upload, oh no, command enter, command enter, now I have a URL. It's so good. I've never had a workflow for uploading a random file and getting a URL for it that's this good. And as crazy as it might sound, this is a thing I do all the time. If I need to send a video asset to somebody, like this attempt to export my next 15 video, it is now so easy to very quickly upload it and have a URL that I can send to whoever needs to get it. Oh, it is so good. One of my favorite things that I haven't seen in other similar solutions is the ability to just write a bash script pass parameters here, and now import this bash script as an extension in Raycast. This is one that I really wanted. You might notice I have my top bar here. You probably don't see that in my videos a lot. The reason is I do this. I type in toggle, press enter, and now my top bar is hidden. The reason that works is because a very kind developer, Squark P here, took the time to write me that bash script and make it work with Raycast. He has made my life significantly better I use this command before filming every time I film. I run this command before I get started. And the ability to do that by going here, starting to type the name of it and press enter, it seems dumb and like it's not a big deal. I, For me, these little things add up so much and I can move around this computer better than I have ever been able to move around in even my most carefully configured i3 Linux environments. Even if you're not using a Mac, I hope that some of the workflow benefits here are valuable enough to you that you can adopt them. A lot of these things are possible in a Linux environment. Like I got close with a handful of these in something like Amakube, but it's, it's surprising how much this one app has fundamentally changed the way that I navigate and use my Mac. I've been using it for over a year now, and every couple months, I find one of these little things it does that makes me fall so much more in love with it. Sorry for the giant transition. I filmed this video a bit ago, but Raycast had a really cool thing they just did, and I wanted to show y'all. The Raycast wrapped. They actually took the time to build something similar to the whole like Spotify wrapped experience you've probably seen all over the internet. But for my Raycast usage, and I can see here everything I've done with it. You can see how horrible my sleep schedule is and when I'm using things the most. You can also see that I spend way more time on my computer on stream day than almost any other day of the week, which I thought was interesting. You can also see all of the stuff that I'm using, how critical SVGL is to my life and how much I've been using the emoji shortcut since I set it up. Lifesaver, genuinely been loving that feature. It's weird that their emoji picker is faster than Apple's. Like I'm pressing the button for Apple's now. Okay, now it's opening immediately, but the first time it took like over a second. Theirs is just always instant way better overall. Ready, set, launch. Here's all of the things that I open using Arc. I don't know if it counts when I use the hotkey, because again, I have hotkeys for switching between programs. I don't know if that counts as opened with Arc or not, but yeah, I open a lot of things with it. Crazy how quick cursor ended up on here, because I only started using it earlier this year, and VS Code was the thing I was using before, but I guess I just never opened VS Code from here. I only ever opened it through the terminal, but with or I guess that means it does use the hotkey because I use the hotkey for a cursor, but I almost never command space, then type in cursor. Interesting. I've been super happy with Raycast since I started using it. It took me a while to start using all the features, but you can see I've made progress this last year. And at this point, I don't think I could use my Mac without it. It's become essential software. Let me know what you think. Is Raycast all hype or do you see the benefits too? And until next time, peace nerds.